Hello stormwater designers, welcome back to another Clear Creek Solutions hydrology education video. In this one, we're tackling the difference between hydrology and hydraulics. We get this question a lot and we just want to break it down from a, a general overview of the difference between the two, what each accomplished, and then some of the principles that guide both of these uh, fields of stormwater design or stormwater engineering. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. You can download our new hydrology terms guide in the description down below. It's 100% free and it's a breakdown of some of these most basic hydrology and hydraulics terms that you come across in the engineering world. So if you ever need an overview of those terms, we have that guide for you. It's 100% free in the description. Clear Creek Solutions was founded in 2005 by Joe Rasher and Doug Byerline, and we do software development, hydrology solutions and modeling and develop many software packages around the entire country. But let's get into the topic. Let's first break down what is hydrology. And really, the hydrology is going to be everything surrounding the study of the hydrologic cycle, or as many know it as the water cycle. And when you first learn the water cycle, you know, in grade school or whenever you learn the water cycle, there's always sort of a basic overview that you get where, oh, it rains, the rain sort of falls, it goes into the ocean, and then it's eventually evaporated. And that's a very simplistic look at it, um, but it's still very true. There's just more and more steps as we begin to learn more about this process, the hydrologic cycle. Basically, we want to look at it from uh, condensation forms these clouds, eventually forms precipitation, which and what happens with that precipitation is really important when it comes to the hydrologic cycle. Some of it's going to enter in the storage of these green leaves or some of the natural vegetation and eventually transpire back in the atmosphere or evaporate from a large water body. A lot of that water is going to run off into the ground, either become surface runoff head to a smaller body of water, percolate into the ground, or become overall groundwater flow. And a lot of that water will also become runoff flow that eventually will go to an ocean or already pre-designed pre mitigation facilities set up uh, by the local population. But if that water enters the ocean, it's eventually going to be evaporated by the sun, create condensation again in the clouds, and the cycle starts over. That's the whole idea of the hydrologic cycle. And so hydrology is really involved with studying this natural occurring cycle. Now, if we look at hydraulic studies, yes, it does involve the hydrologic cycle. But when we're talking about hydraulics, we're more talking about how our human interactions and designs with this water that is now in the system, how what sort of systems are we implementing to funnel this water in the correct way? That's really what hydraulics is looking at and the designs that are involved. So if you look at this here, we've got the supply, which either came looks like snow melted from a mountain or stormwater. And so that, or uh, water that is rainfall or precipitation, and then that is entering a stream, but then where does it go from there? Maybe it goes to a treatment plant, maybe it's caught in catch basins, funneled through the sewer system, the, 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 the city's water distribution system, which is usually a network set up, that would be an hydraulic network. And then that might go to the wastewater collection system, finally treated at a plant, and then either funneled back into the natural environment through the, the water system or sent back out into nature. But that drinking water distribution system, which is likely a connection or a network of catch basins, pipes that are set up and usually funneled by gravity, that's the hydraulic system that we're talking about here. So hydrology is the study of the distribution and movement of water both in above and below the Earth's surface. It measures water and characteristics based on the natural environment, such as temperature, precipitation patterns, evapotranspiration, and surface water movement. And study of these aspects are very vital to determining the flow and volumes entering the system for design and mitigation. So when we study the hydrologic cycle, the runoff that we're getting from the stormwater events is very important when we're designing uh, any of our hydraulic systems because they are related. Hydrology and hydraulics are related because that water is eventually going to enter a hydraulic system, which is probably going to enter back into the natural environment which feeds right back into the hydrologic cycle. And so determining how much water is running off these natural events is very important for our design of our facilities. And so hydraulics involves the design and construction of structures that are used to convey water. So the hydraulic design is concerned with the conveyance of flows and fluids, mostly sewage and the water. And gravity is going to be a main force to move the fluids, although pumps are sometimes used to pump the water from one location to another. But in most cases, gravity is actually the main force and can do a lot of the work for us. So this involves the designs of dams, levees, channels, canals, and many more facilities. So here's an example of a hydrology faci facility. This is a detention pond. Essentially, when it rains, when water rains on a certain location, it's going to run off the surface and the inner flow of that soil and eventually have to drain to one location. 
In this case, it's a pre-designed detention pond. So this is a designed facility, but it's usually natural, naturally occurring things in nature, such as dirt, um, grass, and, and things like that. And that is what is storing the water as opposed to being funneled through pipes. Now they can be funneled through pipes, but this is an example of a hydro hydrologic designed uh, facility. And then for hydraulics, this would be something has designed in a hydraulic system. We have water that rains on a street. It's going to enter a storm drain and through gravity, it's heading to a combined sewer system. Also, maybe the downspout from the house or the sewage from the house is also getting combined in this combined sewer system. A lot of the times, uh, the fresh water from the storm drain and the combined sewer don't always combine. They sometimes head into separate networks, but that's a, uh, an example of a design hydraulic system uh, that could be created. So, in the hydrology's case, the detention facility was modeled to mitigate and store excess flow from the development. So if we had a development, it rained on the development, well then the gravity would naturally drain that water to this detention facility. And the flow amounts are determined by some hydrology methods that we're going to cover later in this video. And so natural flow routing is used, and although some of the hydraulic design may be used at some points in the process, as I said before, the soil conditions and saturation take precedent. So what's occurring in the natural environment takes precedent in determining the design of this facility. And in hydraulics, water is routed through piping networks to a combined sewer or stormwater system. And that water will be taken to either a water treatment plant or discharged into a much larger water body. And so these are more engineered and, and a structured system than the hydrologic system, which relies more on natural processes. So what are some of the hydrology methods for determining flow? So we have a couple, we have actually three here. The first one is continuous simulation hydrology. We have videos on these different forms of hydrology. You can find them on our YouTube channel. So the continuous simulation hydrology measures and tracks water through the entire hydrologic cycle. It can determine soil saturation flow and runoff for each pre-selected time step and is the most complicated form of hydrology, but is great for measuring the flow that is coming during a certain storm event. The rational method, it allows you to compute peak runoff for a stormwater site through very simple equations. And this main equation is the method Q equals CIA, and that peak runoff equals a runoff coefficient times a rainfall intensity of inches per hour times the site area in acres. And this is a very simplistic method, but can give you a quick runoff estimate. Then we have the SCS runoff method, and the SCS runoff curve number method was developed by the, the USDA and the Soil Conservation Service, and is another me method for determining runoff uh, from rainfall using some soil curves and some precipitation data. So what are some hydraulics methods? Now these aren't necessarily pipe design methods, but these are uh, equations that can be used to determine flow in a pipe, the size that a pipe needs to be. One of the first ones that uh, equations that are often used is Manning's equation, which is an empirical equation that applies to uniform flow in open channels and is a functional of the channel velocity, flow area, and channel slope. And we'll show you the equations in the next slide. Was well, essentially for Manning's equation, we're looking at open channels as opposed to a closed channel. And for the Hayes and Woolley's equation, it's an empirical relationship which relates the flow of water in a pipe with the physical properties of the pipe and the pressure drop caused by friction. So we're really looking at the physical properties of this pipe. How does that affect flow as well as the friction and changes when we have pipe bends and movements? How does that affect the flow of water? Then we have Bernoulli's equation, a statement of the conservation of energy principle appropriate for flowing fluids. Bernoulli's equation is often used to determine pressure in different pipe locations and um, as well as the energy in the entire system. So here's those three, three equations laid out. Main's equation, it, the flow in the pipe is going to be 1.486 over N, which is a roughness coefficient of that pipe, times the cross-sectional area, the hydraulic radius to the two-thirds, and then the slope of that pipe system. The Hazen-Williams equation has a K factor multiplied by another roughness coefficient, the hydraulic radius, and then the slope or energy grade line of that um, system. And then the Bernoulli energy equation is just another energy equation to determine at the energy in the system or the pressure at different locations in the system. So in conclusion, the hydrologic and hydraulic studies are both very important to understanding the entire water resource design process. Both methods must be used to model facilities and systems for the good of the public and environment. And there's many softwares that we use to model these aspects of design. For example, in Western Washington, the Western Washington hydrology model is used to model the hydrologic aspect. Many people use EPA SWIM or some version of SWIM to model the hydraulic process. Both of these are very important when we're sizing our stormwater systems in the entire country and used across the entire world. We need hydrologic facilities 
to take that runoff and mitigate it, but also we need hydraulic systems to funnel water, especially from urban areas, to then get treated or put back into the natural system. And so that is the main difference between the hydrologic and hydraulic cycles. If you have any questions, leave them a comment down below, and we'll see you guys next time.